So I'm just using Sennelia oil pastels to mark out the skyline. It's quite hard to see black with the way that I've prepared this board. I don't necessarily need to use this, but I'm just showing it. It's a Liquitex acrylic marker in a sort of mid-grey tone. It stands out better. However, don't use this if you've got a base paint or an underpainting um, in oil. And this is a Molotow pen. Um, again, it's an acrylic. Super bright, this color. You can get more subdued colors. Um, both these acrylic markers, they won't wash away with Gamsol. And this is all three up close. I sketched in some buildings, I don't know whether I'll keep these. But buildings work really well in paintings if they are the right fit. I'm starting to work some colour in with a palette knife. And this is mixing white, um, a little bit of Naples yellow and some cold wax medium using a hog's hair brush, big, um, a big filbert side, uh, style brush. And I'm bringing it up into the sky using the same colour mix. Later on I'll add little dabs of a sort of rosebud colour just to give variation. And as the sky ascends I've started to introduce a bit more blue and this is a um, a lovely colour called uh, King's Blue. You can mix it yourself, it's kind of laziness really and or convenience. Sometimes you know that a colour works for you so you sort of have a big tube of it on standby. This is the same colour mix but with a little bit more of the King's Blue. And as I go right to the top of the sky section I've got a nice steely grey um, blue, bit of Payne's grey mixed in with the King's blue. Obviously cold wax pigment all the way up through this. The sky looks in very definite layers. So I've decided to just mix it up with some um, quite random brush strokes. Don't want it to be too still in this one. This is a cold wax medium painter's technique. I don't necessarily want or need to do it, but I'm just sort of trying it out. So I can retrieve it if I'm not happy with it. The roller goes over the scrunched up tissue paper and there is some paint going through this paper onto the roller. So be careful if you're doing it and you don't want to um, spread that color onto the rest of the painting surface with the roller. I'm in two minds whether I like it. Now that I've painted over it, I'm sort of thinking, wow, I should have kept that, but here's what I did. I rolled over with my big Japanese roller right at the top. Don't worry about it going onto your mountain. You can get rid of that using your little scraper tool. Here's some of the texture that I'm happy to keep. I quite like it. You can see roller marks in it as well. It's kind of raw looking and I've decided that's the way I want to go with this. So I'm flattening some of this texture down, calming it down a little bit with, um, uh, this, I think that's still the filbert brush. It might be a flat. A bit more of a close up. You can see where the edge of the mountain meets the sky. I'm using that little roller again to, uh, because it's, it's clean. Um, and it's a bit small and helps me get into the area that just hugs the, the mountain side where it meets the sky. You can still see the texture. I'm going to give it a clean up here. Now there's Gamsol on a tissue. It won't touch the acrylic underpainting or the line drawing. It will take away the um, Sennelia wax pastels. So be careful, sort of plan what you want to do at this stage. Got a very dark mix of cold wax medium with uh, Payne's Grey, Lizard Crimson, and Ultramarine. I'm just mapping out where I want my real dark darks to go. They don't have to stay this colour, I'll remove it with scraping tools 
and um, paint lighter tones over it where I need to. Every time I look at the buildings in this they sort of distract me and the more I think about it the more I'm thinking that they need to be removed. They stop my eye going up the mountainside even though they're lovely. Now I've mixed up some quite bright rock colours and some mid-tones. I'm just going to dab these in. See how they look. I might decide to take them away, which is an easy process. Just speeding this up so you can get the idea. slightly bluer paint going into the dark shadowed side now. And it stands out from this Payne's Grey mix. It's a nice little treat for the eye, even though it's still a very dark colour if you were to put this on a, a white surface. Looking at foliage, I want to indicate some kind of growth going up this mountain side. I'm doing that with a really greyed out um, green mix. I think it's got yellow ochre, Payne's Grey, um, tiny bit of cadmium yellow and some white. I'm using the palette knife here to score some dark mix into this brighter surface just to, just to give some indication of the cracks in the um, mountainside. And I do this again a, a bit later on with light colours on the dark so we get that nice contrast. to use the point of the blade not necessarily to put paint on but to sort of scrape away this is a knife loaded with a lighter color and that really pops out from the dark you know quite a pleasing way I think I'm starting to feel like the mountain is there now and I'm solving the problem of how I'm going to make it connect to the midground I'm still looking at that building all the time thinking it's not a good fit. It's a perfectly natural part of the painting process or the composition process. You know, we have either an accident or um, we make decisions along the way. I'm quite keen on that bluey, grey sort of shadow mix. It's quite effective, pops out. Starting to give some texture to the left hand side of the mountain there. And some little dark cracks. So I'm using paint and I'm using the tip, the pointy end of this palette knife to draw in. So when I scrape that away, you get the underpainting black or dark sort of natural colour line poking through, which is nice. Using really thick impasto paint now made of the cold wax medium and the pigment colour. You can just see the imprints of the tools making it. I've been asked a few times why I, um, I use the cold wax medium and it is really to give the paint that stiffness that it keeps its shape. Okay, it's time now to start thinking about how I'm going to resolve this middle uh, area. So I'm starting to invite some vegetation in. It's quite bright colour. Um, but because the tree line is dark there, it starts to stand out a little bit. This is a sort of chiseled, tipped palette knife. And I'm using it to drag paint right the way down, give me some nice verticals. And it's quite a pleasing thing to do. added a little bit more saturated colour to that now, so it's slightly greener. 
you can see that really coming in there. It's basically the same mix um, that I described. Uh, Payne's grey, a bit of ultramarine I think. Um, some yellow ochre and some white. Greens are really hard, you just have to experiment to get the colour, um, you know, that to make the colour you need from the palette that you prefer. Here in Norway, my greens are totally different to uh, um, greens I use elsewhere for some reason. I never used to put white in green. The house has definitely gone at this stage. Um, I was still open to the idea of putting it back in if this failed. Um, it's not that I fear this sort of challenge of doing buildings, far from it, but I, I wanted the eye to go up through the vegetation and, and up to the top of the mountain rather than stop and say, hmm, this is a nice little building here. So it's just editing and, and you know reviewing your composition. You don't have to um, stick to your original plan. It's okay to, to amend things as you go and you see how they really look once you get going. I'm just drawing down some verticals now and I think I just used a uh, hog's hair round brush. That's the back of a brush now, the pointy end, the wooden end of a brush going in to remove scratch away paint in a, also a pleasing way and you could use a skewer for this, a bamboo skewer or you know a kebab skewer, I've done that before in other videos. Um, and yeah, back with the knife, I, I like the tip of the knife. Um, I'm loading it with paint on the side here and just dragging really dark paint down through these greens so it just doesn't look like a rectangle. The bottom half of the painting surface just to be green. I'm, I'm interrupting it a bit with the darks. And I'm leaving them really thick so they don't go muddy. I want them to be really pure. I'm just really continuing to do um, this process that I started all along. Somewhere along the way um, I dropped a little um, bits of dry pigment in a sort of burnt sienna colour into the, into the foreground uh, and just flattened it into the paint with the back of a palette knife. You see that in a close-up but unfortunately I didn't film it. But it is quite pretty. At this stage I still don't feel like I've got all my verticals in, but I'm starting now to think it's time to um, finish. There's that crucial point in time where you think, is it done? And if you don't stop yourself in time you can totally wreck it. Scraping a bit of paint away and adding a bit of paint with this palette knife. Back in with the point of the palette knife. I'm just using this flat um, hog's hair brush or goat hair brush. Um, I don't want it all to look the same, so I'm giving some areas where it's just flattened with a brush, just basically tapping it in some areas and, or lightly pulling it across the surface. <laughs> 